Hey, what's going on? I'm Eddie Francis, and I saw something today that I thought I wanted to go over with you. I actually saw an article from USA Today that asked the question whether or not there is a September surge in job hiring. It's a great article. The link to it, if you want to check it out, is in the caption. If you're looking at this on Instagram, uh, the link is in the bio, and you'll be able to check out the article right there. But you know, whether there is a September surge or not, this is a good time to update your resume. One of the arguments that they made about this being a September surge is that people are getting ready for holiday hiring. Um, and then uh, there was some other, uh, there was another piece I saw um, actually by the Society of Human Resources Management, also known as SHRM, that mentioned that this is around a time, um, August, September, um, October when a lot of hiring budgets are being finalized. So there could be something to this September surge thing. Of course, there's also an argument in that same article that says, eh, maybe not so much. Either way, this is a good time to get your resume updated. And that's what I want to talk to you about for a few minutes. So a little bit about me, if um, we have not met. Um, I am actually a former talent acquisition professional. Uh, for about six and a half years, I was able to do recruiting for several organizations, including Quest Diagnostics, Staples, Caliber Collision, uh, Lowe's Home Improvement, uh, Stat Lab, and a couple of other organizations that I did some work for. Um, and then I was able to recruit from every level, from entry level to executive level. And I worked with about 300 hiring managers, which in that amount of time isn't so bad, but I really wanted to be able to talk a little bit off the dome about um, why, or about some things you need to know about updating your resume and taking advantage of the September surge. If once again, there really is a September surge. Um, I also worked in communications and marketing. When I was a director of communications and marketing at Dillard University, I recruited for a couple of positions uh, that were in my area. Um, and I mentioned that because this combination of communications and marketing, in addition to talent acquisition, kind of gives me a bit of an edge when it comes to working with people on their personal brands. And so first things first, when it comes down to getting your resume updated, uh, the first thing I'll say is this, if you are someone who is not looking for a job actively right now, and you're thinking to yourself, well, Eddie, I don't, I don't think I necessarily have to get out there right now because I'm really happy with what I do. I will say this, and I'm not trying to be a jerk when I say it, you never know. Um, I am an example of you never know. I actually had a, a job that I was crazy about. I did some work that I enjoyed doing. I worked around some people that I enjoyed working around. And one day, uh, there was a difference of opinion between me and my supervisor and well, it was time to go. And so it happens like that. Even if you've been with a job for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, even that being said, here's some things you want to know when it comes time to update your resume. And I think now is a good time to do it. So first thing is um, it takes some time to update your resume, especially if you haven't updated it in say a year or a couple of years. I actually have a resume client I'm working with right now who hasn't updated their resume in like uh, well, two, three years. And so there's a lot of information that needs to go into updating that resume. Um, and the reason this person hired me to do it is because I'm taking a lot of time off their hands and I can see some things that needs to be on their resume that they may not necessarily see uh, that needs to be on their resume. The other thing is, Hiring managers and recruiters do read resumes. One of the things that uh, that that came out a few years back, the Ladders did this study, and they wanted to get an idea of how long recruiters and hiring managers take a look at resumes. It was determined at the time, according to the study, that recruiters and hiring managers spend about six minutes looking, I'm sorry, six seconds, seconds, six seconds looking at resumes. That is actually pretty accurate, depending on the kind of recruiter you're talking to. I spent about four to six seconds per resume. 
that's because I spent a lot of time in my career being uh, my, my, my recruitment career as a high volume recruiter. So there were times I looked at up to 200 resumes per week. If I had that many resumes to go through and I was trying to fill, say, about 25 open positions and there were there was at one point, I think I had to try to fill about 40 open positions at one time. If that's the case, yes, I'm going to be looking through a lot of resumes. I'm going to I'm not going to have a whole lot of time to look through these resumes. You know, I'm going into the applicant tracking system. You only got a couple of seconds to take a look at it because, you know, you got to move on to the next one and the next one and the next one. Here's what's happening in that four to six seconds. Recruiters are looking for certain words and terms that are going to tell them this is the kind of person I'm looking for to fill the position. So if it's customer service, then they're going to look for terms like customer service, um, communication. They're going to look for anything that relates to cu the customer service skill set. The other thing you need to know is that your resume should compel someone to want to give you a call or to send you an email. So at the end of the day, what you want is for the information on your resume to align with the information on the job description. So you want to be able to have the same types of words. Now, look, don't look at a job description and say, oh, I really like this job. I'm going to start throwing all these words on my resume so somebody can look at it and you don't exactly have those skill sets. That gets you in trouble because once you get somebody on the phone and that person is talking to you and they're asking you all these detailed questions about your skills and you're going, oh, well, I just really wanted you to see my resume. Either that person is going to say, oh, wow, that's pretty courageous of you. Let's talk. Not likely. Or they're going to say, you just wasted my time. Very likely. The other thing that I will say about updating your resume is that there is a lot of trial and error involved, okay? You're not going to get it completely right the first time. Sometimes you will update that resume and you are going to think you got it and then you don't exactly get some contact from people and then you go in and you touch it up a little bit. You might notice a little bit more contact. So it, it does take some trial and error, right? Send it to a friend, a, a trusted colleague who works in the same field. Let them take a look at it. Let them proofread it. Let them give you some feedback. Now, what we have right here is um, a resume heat map. This also came from the study that the Ladders did. It's an article that Fast Company uh, ran. So you'll see that on the left, the before resume, that those blotches, they represent where a recruiter's or a hiring manager's eyes tend to go when they're taking a look at a resume. You'll notice that's a pretty basic layout and is there's nothing wrong with it, but it is a pretty basic layout. And there's really not much to break up your vision there, right? But if you take a look at the resume on the right, the after resume, you'll notice that they did a couple of things to break up the visuals. And you'll notice that the um, do you notice that the, the heat map there, the visuals or the blotches on the heat map are a bit more evenly distributed. And so this goes into something that I really like to do whenever I work with clients on their resumes. I have this thing called a resume rule of thirds. And on the front page of the resume, on the first page of the resume, I break it up into three sections. The top section is your handshake with the hiring manager or the recruiter who's looking at the resume. Of course, it's your contact information. Um, and the contact information doesn't have to be extensive. At the end of the day, we're looking for two ways to contact you. We are looking for either your email or your phone number, or we obviously want to get both of those. So if you notice the resume on the right, that section is smaller than the resume on the left, the before resume. So you don't really need that much room to put your contact information. But then... You'll notice that on this resume, um, you have a description of this technology innovation executive. This is where I really encourage clients and work with them on trying to brand themselves. Um, 
you know, what describes their skill set? What describes their experience? What describes the kind of person they are, the kind of leader they are? Uh, what makes them valuable in the workplace? And then that second third is where we get sometimes, a lot of times what I tend to do in that second third of the uh, page, of the first page, is I'll either start with the experience, but if I think it's someone who needs to really, really, really put their skill set out there, then I'll have that split between the first third and the second third so that the hiring manager or the uh, uh, recruiter can take a look at what skills this person has. And that's where a lot of the keywords might pick up. Whenever you have someone who is doing a search for resumes, the keywords will pick up on these specific words that they are looking for. So let's say you are a marketing person and let's say this is someone who is looking for um, a, a content marketing specialist, right? In that second third or the bottom of the first third, what I would do is I would put in that section a skill section that says uh, terms like marketing, content marketing, infographics, um, graphics, either by way of Canva or InDesign or whatever program this person works on. Also, video editing, audio editing, um, blogs, e-newsletters, all that kind of stuff that might go into content marketing, I would load it up in that section so that when the recruiter is taking a look at it, the recruiter can say, oh, good, bam, this is somebody I want to talk to. And then the bottom third is where you get more into the past experience. Now, there is this debate about whether or not a resume should be one or two pages and all this other good stuff. I am not one of those people who says you got to cram everything onto one page. I may be a bit different though, but the reason I say that is if the recruiter or the hiring manager sees what they want to see on the first page and you have another page, they are going to go to that second page to get some more information. So there you go. That's my resume rule of thirds. But a lot of times I, I want to go back to that top third. A lot of times I like to use that section for a professional statement so that people can get an idea of what kind of person you are, what your value is um, to the people around you and what your skill set might be. It's a great way to say, this is who I am and this is why you need to take a look at the rest of my resume. Um, the other thing that I thought was really, really important to point out is let's say that you are sending your resume via email. A lot of times folks are going to not only ask you to fill out the applicant tracking system, um, and I'll get to that in just a second because there's something very important we have to remember, but so a lot of times people will say, just email the resume, especially if it's a friend of a friend of a friend or something like that, and they say, hey, just send me your resume. Great. Here's what you do not want to do. If you take a look at what I have on the screen right now, you do not want to name your resume, your file resume. Because if you do that, this is what's going to happen. I'm just going to see resume, 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 resume. So the point here is that when you, yeah, see if the dog agrees with me. See, the point here is that when you name your file, use your name. And, and I do not use initials. Use your entire name. And so for me, my resume files read eddie.francis.marcom.resume or eddie.francis.recruitment.resume. Either way, it says Eddie Francis. The other thing um, that I'll say, final thing, is that when you take a look um, at your resume and you see that the resume is into the system, and if you have a contact, if you have contact information, for a hiring manager or a recruiter, then it is quite okay to check in, send an email and say, hey, I filled out my resume. I, I, just, I, I, just, I just submitted my resume. I just filled out the application. Any idea of the timeline on this? They, they may not answer it right away. Because remember, if it's high volume, there's a good chance they're not going to answer it right away. But if they're conscientious, they're going to do it. And, and But I will also say, don't hold it against them if they don't, all right? So don't turn it into a, a judgment thing. 
So I thought that was some stuff that would be um, interesting for you to know, interesting for you to find out. I hope that you find it helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, okay? My information is in the caption right there, but I will tell you that you can reach out to me at eddie at eddiefrancis.com, eddie at eddiefrancis.com. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you have about your resume. And if you want to talk about it, uh, free consultation. I'm more than happy to schedule some time, uh, schedule about 15 minutes so that we can talk about um, uh, we can talk about what it is that you can uh, do for your do with your resume. Um, the other thing is that if you go to my website, eddiefrancis.com, if you go to eddiefrancis.com, there is a contact form there and you can fill that out. And yes, I do get the contact. And yes, I do respond. Again, I hope this was helpful. Uh, happy hunting, especially with the September surge.